Hey, Walt here from StogieReview.com with another video cigar review. This time around we are smoking the Oliva Serie V Milano Maduro. And it is a cigar that I've been really excited about. It was uh, highly anticipated at this year's IPCPR trade show a few months back. I'm not quite sure when it went from uh, being just on display at the trade show to actually shipping. Um, I don't know what kind of delay there is. Uh, it took me quite a while to get my hands on some. Uh, I didn't actually have any up until about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, I was finally able to get some, and uh, it's been an agonizing wait, because I've been so excited uh, to see the Maduro version of the Milano, and the interesting thing there is, I really wanted the Milano to fail, and um, and by that, I mean, first, let's, let's kind of talk about my history with uh, with Oliva and, and, and the Serie V. So, <clears throat> years and years ago, I... We were, uh, Jerry and I were doing reviews for Stogie Review. Um, for a little while we were doing just uh, written reviews and then we started getting into the video stuff. And one of my very early reviews was one on the Oliva Serie G Maduro and I bought it from, you know, my local shop. I picked up a couple and, you know, I did this really awkward YouTube review with the, I don't, I think it might have been a blue shower curtain or something behind me as a backdrop and it was, you know, it was the early days. It was, it was rough, you know. I, th I probably recorded it with a webcam sitting on top of, you know, with, you know computer and things like that. So, um, you know, it was it was rough in those days. And uh, a few weeks, maybe a, a month or two after I did that review, I got a, an email from Sam Lucia, who at the time was the uh, the Western Pennsylvania, Ohio, and I think Kentucky rep for Oliva. And we got to talking a little bit, and uh, he introduced me to Dave, which was the Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, DC, New York rep for Oliva, and uh, while he was introducing us and stuff, he uh, he sent me a, a care package which included like one of each of the lines that uh, that Oliva was producing, and it it, it really allowed me to broaden my horizons uh, beyond the Flor de Oliva product that I was smoking and the the Oliva Serie G Maduro, which was you know one of the very few cigars that I could get my hands on at this particular shop, which had a very small selection. So I was introduced to the brand, and immediately it struck me as one of the best budget brands on the market. You know, here was Oliva with a, a variety of cigars, and all of them were budget friendly. I mean, you know, you could pick up uh, the Siri G in the little special G size for like a little over two dollars. You know, two dollars and change, and and a variety of their other lines weren't a whole lot more expensive. You know, the the, the larger G formats were in the three to four dollar range. Um, you had you had the O's that were like four or five dollars at the time. Back then they made special S's, but they were much more expensive. I think they were closer to seven eight dollars. And then you had the um, the Master Blend series, which was you know nine ten eleven dollars somewhere around there. And I was just blown away by all of the different stuff that Oliva produced, and uh, I th they stuck in my mind as being one of the best budget brands available. And I smoked them for quite a while. I, I smoked a ton of the the Siri G's, especially the Siri G Maduros, uh, absolutely loved them, and was a big fan of the Oliva line for a very long time. Talking too much, not smoking enough. But um, after a few years, the the Siri V. At that point in time, it was the Siri V. Ligero Especial was released. It was later changed to the Liga Especial because. Uh, Another manufacturer was using the the Liga or the the Lijero name a lot in their lines and was a little upset by it. But um, you know, when that cigar was released, I went to a couple of dinners in the area, uh, launch dinners. Uh, phenomenal cigar for the money. Uh, you know, I think at that time they were like five and change for a robusto or double robusto or whatever it was that they were putting out in that line. And uh, big big fan of the Serie V. Love the Lancero. You know, just. Uh, big fan. You know, it was just gushing over that cigar for a long time. Uh, it became kind of my go-to, and I stopped buying a lot of the other Oliva product just so I can get my hands on the V. And, uh, you know, eventually the, the V Maduro was released, and I fell in love with that. I actually enjoyed it far more than the original V, and that seemed to be the, the trend with Oliva stuff. You know, there's the the natural version, which which is is always decent, and then there's the Maduro variety of it, which I always find more appealing. So, you know the 
I fell in love with the V, and then when the V Maduro came out, I didn't really care about the V anymore, and I just wanted to get my hands on the Maduro version. And then the the V Milanio came out, and now with the release of the the Milanio Maduro, I was really eager to try that because I expected to forget all about the you know the the standard Milanio. But the the Milanio was actually a line I I wanted to fail. Um, and not necessarily wanted to fail. I just didn't want to like it. And the reason being was I was a huge fan of the Siri V. Uh, I, I, again, I, I smoked them as often as I could. And they were a good five, six, seven dollars. And over the year, it seems like every single year, Oliva raises the prices. So it went from like five and change to I don't know what the, the baseline price is on them now. It's been quite a while since I bought one, but um, I, you know, even even with the price increases, I still think the Serie V is a very good c cigar for the money. So when the Melania was was talked about, and uh, you know, we were seeing things pop up online, and it was going to be the big thing at the next trade show, I started looking at it and not seeing enough. So we were taking the <clears throat> we were taking that V that I love so much. And it appeared as though all we were doing was just changing the band, tweaking the blend a little bit, and doubling the price. And the doubling the price thing bothered me by, uh, bothered me considerably. So it looked like we weren't getting enough for this enormous price hike. And I simply just I didn't want the I didn't want to like the cigar. When I finally got my hands on on some to smoke them, uh, you know, choking down that fourteen, fifteen, sixteen dollar price price point, I just I didn't want to like it. I I, I was looking for a reason to hate it. And, uh, and go back to smoking the V and telling everyone that the Milanio kind of sucked and they shouldn't be spending all this money on it. So I smoked the cigar and it totally shocks me. Uh, it, it was just an amazing cigar. Absolutely loved it. And it made me feel horrible that, that, that I, I was just... Or maybe made me feel horrible is kind of the wrong way to put it. It was kind of humbling where I absolutely wanted to dislike that cigar so bad and then it turned out to be one of my absolute favorite cigars. It was uh, it was an interesting experience. So here I am these days. I absolutely love the Milanio. Uh, it's an awesome cigar. Unfortunately, it's not priced well enough for me to smoke it on a regular basis. So it is strictly a special occasion cigar. And the only time I can get my hands on them anymore is the, the rare occasions I get up to Cigars International. So they're they're few and far between in my rotation, but there's something that uh, that I'm very fond of and I hold in very high regard. So when I heard about the the Milanio Maduro, I was really expecting it to blow away the standard Milanio. And I could not wait to get my hands on some. And it took a little while, but finally I have some and I've been smoking through them lately. And I've got to say, I'm impressed. Um, I don't want to blow the review, but uh, so I'm not going to compare the two just yet, but uh, the cigars are very good. I, I, I was only able to get my hands on the Torpedo, and I've always had issues with uh, Oliva Torpedoes. I'm, I don't, it's going to sound bad, but I don't think Oliva can make a decent Torpedo. Uh, never ever have I had one that was that I thought was really good. They're always too tight, and that annoys the hell out of me. So uh, I'm struggling with this a little bit. The the draw is stiff. I'm getting uh, kind of uh, a light smoke volume. Fortunately, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's very dense, so it coats the palate well. I don't feel like I have to get a monster mouthful of smoke to get any flavor out of it. So uh, we're we're doing good. I'm able to to get some smoke through the cigar. It's thick enough that it coats the palate, and I get flavor out of it without having to you know get that monster mouthful. You know, it continues along the lines with the Mil with the Milanio and with the V itself, in that it is kind of medium to full bodied. Uh, the flavor is actually is more pronounced than the the standard V. I think it's it's closer to full uh, in in terms of flavor intensity. I always get really confused. I don't want to call it uh, a powerful cigar, powerful flavor, or a strong flavor because that just has negative uh, connotations tied to it. So. Um, in this case, we've got a a, a full intensity or a, you know a, just an intense flavor that is good and it's powerful. And I'm trying really hard not to use the word strong, but it looks like I'm going to wind up doing that anyway. But uh, 
good flavor, flavor intensity, um, good solid body, medium to full. It's creamy, coats the palate well. Um, I'm getting a little tickle in the back of my throat. It's a little uh, kind of aggressive, but um, I've been talking a lot and probably a result of not sipping on something and lots of talking and you know everything that goes along with th doing these reviews, which aren't ideal, but uh, which aren't an ideal smoking situation. But uh, we're off to a really good start, so I'm going to smoke a little bit further. Uh, I'll come back. We'll probably take a look at the first third. I think we're going to treat this like a, a full-blown review where I don't really care if it gets long. I don't want it to get too long, but I have a feeling it's going to anyway, and uh, it is what it is. So sit tight. I'll be back in just a second, and we'll see how the first third of my Oliva Siri V Milanio Maduro goes. Well, I'm plugging along on my Oliva Siri V Milanio Maduro. And initially, I was going to come back and, you know, do the whole one-third, two-third, three-thirds kind of thing and uh, and kind of step through the review like we used to in the past. However, there really hasn't been much change on the cigar, which is why I allowed it to get so far down. Uh, it's almost at, the, at the, about the halfway point now. Before I turn the camera back on, I thought, you know, with so little going on, it really didn't make sense to draw out the video and do all these little segments when when I could just jump in and do one and then come back and maybe do one more before we close it out. You know, because that, that the initial part of the video was so long, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to, to draw it out. So with that said, uh, the cigar is smoking really well. I've got a couple of, looks like two or three big chunks of uh, ash in the ashtray. So uh, the as far as the construction goes, I'm getting uh, big solid pieces of ash. I haven't had anything fall in my lap. Um, no mess, and, you know, no flaking, no flowering. Uh, the burn line is, is thin and even. I've had to touch it up twice so far, uh, both of which were just because it, I let it sit in the ashtray a little bit too long. I had to run and refresh my coffee. Um, the cigar sat a little bit too long then. I had to touch it up and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, the, the types of touch-ups that you expect from neglecting the cigar, letting it sit too long. Uh, the smoke volume is a little bit better now. Uh, I reclipped the cigar a little bit further down. Uh, I tried sort of crushing the 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 head of the cigar, loosening up the tobacco to see if the, I, I could get the smoke to draw a little freer. But uh, it's it's marginally better. Uh, I would imagine I could probably cut this thing clear to the band and it would still be stiff. Uh, and the reason being, it's just really pack, packed tight in there. You know, I think it was... Uh, a well-packed cigar to begin with, and then when it was pressed into this shape, it just really compressed everything, and then this is what we're getting. Um, I've smoked a handful of these, and the draw is, it's kind of, it varies. Uh, this is one of the tighter ones that I've had. I've smoked a couple of other ones that were a bit looser, but all of them would are what I would consider to be a stiff draw. Even with a reduced smoke volume, I'm still getting lots of flavor. Uh, you know, good creamy smoke it doesn't require a giant mouthful of smoke to get, you know, flavor and nuance out of it. So that's that's a really good plus of uh, of of the makeup of the cigar. I don't need a wide open draw to feel like I'm getting anything out of it. Uh, the smoke is creamy. It coats the palate well. It's pretty easy on the palate. I don't feel like it's aggressive. I'm pulling kind of hard on the cigar. It's not heating up, and uh, it's not bitter. So that that's a really big plus. Sometimes when these cigars get tight. You have to work them so hard that the tobacco gets really hot, and then smoke turns bitter and acrid, and it's just a downhill battle from there. But in this case, we're doing pretty well. Uh, as far as the construction goes, it's it's great, except for the draw being a bit tight. Outside of that, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. The flavor profile is very, very similar to the standard Milanio Maduro, or I'm sorry, the, the standard Milanio, the natural wrapper. And uh, I guess you could expect that. However, like I think there's a bigger difference between the Siri V uh, Maduro, or the Siri V and the Siri V Maduro. There's I think there's uh, much more contrast there with the with the Maduro wrapper. I don't think that uh, this this Maduro variety does as much to the blend as say that the V Maduro. In this case, the difference between the the uh, the Milanio and the Milanio Maduro aren't and aren't quite as big. I mean, you can definitely taste that this is a Maduro. You know, you're getting some of the, the bitter coffee, the bitter chocolate flavors. Those uh, those rich, you know, traditional Maduro flavors are coming out in the cigar. They're just not uh, 
they just don't change up the flavor profile as much as as some you know you, some of the other cigars that are, that have been made into Maduros. Uh, the flavor profile is very reminiscent of the standard Milanio, you know, just with the exception of, uh, you know, an additional, you know, bitter chocolate and coffee and Maduro flavors, those kinds of things. You know, so I'm getting a leathery taste, I'm getting some spicy components, I'm getting a rich, uh, just a natural tobacco sort of zing on the palate. It's, uh, it's a very complex and interesting cigar. This is something that you could, you could sit back and sip on the smoke and and just pick out endless flavors, little nuances here and there. It's it's a cigar that has uh, little fla flavors that evolve as you go, so it, ma it makes it uh, something that's very complex and something you, you really have to sit and focus on if you're trying to get absolutely everything out of it. And uh, that's got its goods and bads. Um, this isn't something that, that, that I would grab and sit down and smoke with a group of people. Um, I don't think I would get as much out of it. I think I would just kind of smoke it just like I would the standard Serie V. And uh, it, it wouldn't while it would be a very good cigar, I don't think I would get everything out of it. This is more of a cigar that I would smoke if I was by myself, you know, sitting, you know, kind of in a quiet room, reading a book, uh, you know, trying to, to work on the computer, doing, you know, doing those uh, those solitary kinds of things. I think uh, the cigar shines much more than when you're in a big social setting. So, you know, at this point, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I will say that I think I like the Milanio better than natural wrap version, which is kind of a surprise because I've always been a Maduro guy, and every time Oliva comes out with a Maduro version of something, I'm always kind of head over heels in love with the Maduro version over the natural. In this case, uh, the Maduro, it, while it's a good cigar, it's not really winning me over. I think if given the opportunity of having the Milanio and the Milanio Maduro sitting in front of me, I would pick up the, the natural version over the Maduro. I mean, again, it's a good cigar. However, I think the, the natural kind of edges it out as far as uh, my flavor preference goes. So, we're doing really well. I'll probably come back one more time, we'll wrap up the video, and I'll let you be on your way. Well, I'm coming down the home stretch of my Oliva Serie V Milanio Maduro. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, it's got everything that an ultra premium, you know, boutique cigar needs. Although Boutique is probably a really bad uh, description. Oliva is just a monst monstrous company. But, um, you know, it's got everything that you would expect from a super premium. Um, you know, it's got nuance, it's got flavor, uh, it smokes really well. The draw has loosened up a little bit as I've burned along. You know, I've been sort of massaging the head of the cigar. And uh, it, it's loosened the draw up uh, considerably. It's still not quite as free flowing as I would like. However, you know, this is probably just a bum stick in the bunch that I got. Um, this is the tightest of the bunch. Uh, the others have been manageable. This one, you know, it's it's not terrible. You know, it's, it's definitely manageable, but, uh, you know, I prefer a looser draw. You take that out of the equation, and it's it's been an excellent cigar. It smokes well, uh, burns great, uh, burns nice and slow. So I've been at this for uh, a couple of hours now, and uh, just enjoying it kind of every step of the way. It's going really well with coffee. Uh, the, the Maduro wrapper gives it those nice, uh, you know, coffee, bitter, chocolate sort of tones. There's uh, a little bit of spicy component in the smoke that really comes through in the sinus. There's some leather flavors, there's, you know, little nu nuances of like, uh, almost like cashew sort of flavors. And it's just got this nice, rich, natural tobacco nuance about it, or this natural tobacco core that really rounds out the smoke nicely. Uh, if you sit back and you really focus on it, you can you can pick out lots of different changes and variations in the way the flavors come across. You know, sometimes those those cashew-like flavors become more pronounced. Sometimes you get more of a coffee flavor. You know, and you get this constant motion of flavors coming in and out of the picture. And it's it's a really nice uh, just cigar to sit back and enjoy and and, and focus on. Uh, again, you know, you get everything you expect out of a super premium. You know, at 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 a starting point of about fourteen dollars for the natural version, you know it, you you really do need to expect a lot. So when you get into the fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollar range, um, you you really have to hold the cigar, you know, to a really high standard. And uh, and I think this one does a really good job of meeting that standard. And uh, you know it's it's definitely something that I'll be smoking more of in the future. I'll probably uh, pick up more of the natural over the Maduro. But uh, this is something that I'll, I'll definitely smoke. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. 
and uh, and I would suggest you give it a try. You know, if your budget allows, and uh, and you can track some down. I don't know what the 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 production is in terms of uh, market saturation. You know, the the the, the Milanio Natural seems a little tough to come by. Um, I know that they call it a limited release, and uh, and they only produce so many boxes in the sense that you know they're not pumping them out like they do the V or they're not pumping them out like they do the G or the O it's not uh, it's not these big massive numbers that you would expect from the other lines but um, this is something that you should be able to get your hands on not you know I don't want to say easily but you know it shouldn't be overly difficult to, to come across some in your local tobacconist so head on out try to get some at least one uh, give it a try I really don't think you'll be disappointed that's going to do it for the review, so thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.